Hello everybody, I just wanted to make a quick video today, um, a review video actually, which I haven't done in quite some time. I've got a couple requests lately to do some reviews on a couple of different machines. Um, this being one of them here, this is the Safety Siren Pro Series 3 radon gas detector, which I picked up a couple of weeks ago. And I've had it um, plugged in ever since. Um, and I figured I would do a review, it's a good time since I got my results back here, as you can see they're being displayed on the screen. And I thought I'd just share that with my viewers and uh, and uh, share this information with everybody because this is a very important subject that unfortunately not enough people know about and they don't know the dangers behind radon gas and, and how it can really compromise your health. So I thought this would be a good um, video to do and, and a nice little uh, review um, at the same time. So um, where to start? So basically um, this unit here retails for about $180 Canadian. Um, which would be about, I don't know, maybe just over 100 bucks US. I figured uh, it, it was a little on the pricey side. And when you get these things in your hand, you see how, how lightweight it is. And it's not there's not really a whole lot to it. But I figured since the, uh, the tests themselves, the radon tests, average, you know, 50 to 100 bucks. And then you got to pay to get your results and have to wait um, to get the results in, which sometimes from some of the nightmare reviews I've read on other test products, um, they sometimes don't receive their results at all. And this is after you've paid it for it or you'll pay for it and then they'll say, oh, sorry, the sample that you sent in is is expired. And it's, it's no good to us. We can't get a reading on it. So I figured rather than paying 50 to 100 bucks plus the, the, the lab testing um, for one test, I could just pick up this unit here for 180 and I could test my home and then I can lend it to my family and my friends and they can test their homes as well and it is uh, it is a worthwhile investment this is a one-time cost and this unit should be good for life so that's the reasoning behind getting the machine now as you can see it is displaying a reading here 195 which is actually pretty darn close to the recommended um, level before you have to take action and start venting your home that the Canadian government recommends they actually recommend 200 becquerels per square per uh, cube cubic meter um, before you actually take action now that's not to say that if you have less than 200 that it's safe by no means is any concentration of radon gas in your home safe it's just not as risky so that's basically where they come up with their recommendation um, 200 is not something that i want to even be remotely close to and the world health organization actually recommends taking action for anything that's above 100 becquerels per cubic meter. So there's some food for thought. Um, so this is well higher than um, what is recommended by the World Health Organization. So um, what do you do if you have a reading that's high like this? Well, there's a couple of different things you can do. Um, usually this is caused by uh, the foundation in your home that's not properly sealed. Um, it can be just a concentration of, of, of degrading um, uranium in your soil in that particular area. It varies a lot from home to home and from area to area. There's other places in Canada, particularly in Ontario, which is where I'm from, that have crazy high readings like 5,000 plus. So suffice it to say that you're, you're really going to want to take action if you have anything remotely close to that kind of reading. Um, but <clears throat> you might be asking yourself, well, what's the worst that could happen if I have radon in my home? Well, according to Health Canada, uh, radon gas is actually the second leading cause of lung cancer aside from smoking. So that should put things into perspective for you. So this is typically um, someone who's a non-smoker and they're diagnosed with lung cancer. Nine times out of ten, radon is the cause for that. So that should uh, give you some indication of how serious it can be. And I've noticed um, a direct correlation from my higher than normal readings here with um, some lung irritation and some uh, illness that I have been getting. So that's where I decided to take action. Oh, one more thing that I will add here. Um, I just thought of this. You want to leave it plugged in for at least two or three days. I think the recommendation is 48 hours um, in order to get your first reading. Until then, you're going to see some lines appearing here. And that's normal. Give it at least 48 hours. And then once it's had a chance to get a good reading, you should finally see it um, display that here um, for you. 
So the other thing also that they suggest is to have it up off the ground. You can't have this directly on the ground. You can have it um, oriented this way or that way. That doesn't really matter. But generally speaking, you want to have it at least, uh, I believe the what they indicate in the instructions is at least a foot off the ground, um, 12 to 24 inches off the ground. And um, you want to put it somewhere where there's not going to be a lot of traffic. You don't want it next to an, an external wall. Um, nowhere near a window or anything that's going to interfere with the reading. So basically in a quiet, um, dark area, it may not necessarily in the middle of your space, but somewhere where it's not going to come in contact with a lot of air drafts or uh, heating ducts, things of that nature. So put it in a dark, quiet place where there's not a lot of traffic and you should get a pretty accurate reading. So here's some additional notes regarding the areas to avoid when placing your radon detector um, in a, a long-term or a short-term position or area. Um, some areas you want to avoid near drafts caused by heating, ventilation, or air conditioning vents, doors, fans, windows, basically anywhere that there's um, any drafts or um, heavy air circulation, you want to avoid those areas um, so that it doesn't um, mess with your readings. You don't want to put it near any excessive heat, such as fireplaces, direct sunlight, areas of high humidity. As I said, you want to typically have it in a dark, cool place where it's not going to have a whole lot of uh, air current. Near televisions, computers, radios, cell phones, cordless phones, and other electrical equipment. Not sure exactly the reasoning behind that, but I'm sure it's sound. Um, near curtains, furniture, and other items that may inhibit the flow of air through the ventilation slots. So... You don't want to have heavy ventilation, but you'd also don't want it to be completely suffocated where nothing's passing, passing through the, the detector. you got to figure radon is a gas and you want it to at least be able to travel uh, a little bit through your, your sensors here on the device. So, And in general, it says the detector should not be located in kitchens, laundry rooms, closets, or bathrooms. And I guess that's to do with uh, traffic levels. And of course, do not place it directly on metal, granite, or slate. And uh, from what I found in my testing, you want to have it at least a foot off the ground, um, preferably either anchored to the wall, which you can do, um, or it comes with these little feet that you can put on it and you can uh, secure it to, to something like a table or a stand of some sort, or even put it up on a little box or something like that. Just get it up off the ground to get an accurate reading. And as you can see here, the uh, EPA presently suggests that cor uh, corrective action be taken to reduce the radon levels in your home if measured over the long term at 4.0 PCI per liter or greater. Not sure what that equates to exactly for um, the Canadian reading, but for Canada, the Ministry of Health recommends that remedial measures uh, be taken in dwellings that exceed an annual radon concentration of 200 becquerels per square per cubic. I always want to say square <laughs> for per cubic meter in a, in a normal occupancy area. And as you can see from my readings, they were pretty darn close to that 200. And again, the World Health Organization actually suggests taking action on anything above 100 becquerels per cubic meter. So all food for thought. So the 195 here is on a long exposure. You see how on the machine it has an L and an S here. So from my understanding, the L is a longer type exposure where it will take the average reading since you've plugged it in. And they recommend to leave it plugged in and reading like this for at least 91 days, if I'm not mistaken. So that would be considered a long exposure. Short-term exposure, I'm not sure the details exactly on that, but I think it's somewhere around the region of seven days to give you a an average reading over those seven days but um, obviously with one you know uh, method or the other you're you're gonna have a good idea of what kind of concentrations of radon are in your home so for us as you can see again um, this is pretty darn close to uncomfortably high for me um, I'd like it to be below a hundred actually and go with the World Health Organization's recommendation on this um, but since we are moving in the next month or so I haven't really taken any action to vent my home other than we had our ba our uh, our home our <clears throat> our bedroom in the basement before and we moved it upstairs to try and get away from this a little bit. Um, but obviously if it's in the basement then it's being carried throughout the whole house probably with the furnace and uh, in the air ducts and just, you know, uh, seepage, you know, from one floor to the other. So 
that's pretty much it for for this review there's not really a whole lot, a lot else that i can say other than it is a great value it's a little on the pricey side at 180 dollars canadian um and again just over 100 bucks us but you know it's it's well worth it when you look at the price of each um of each test itself those test kits you can get it's really not worth it when you can just pick up a machine like this pay a little bit more and then you can reuse it again and again if you move you can test your your new home you can lend it to your friends and family make sure that their uh levels are not are not dangerous and then everybody can have peace of mind it's it's a really simple process easy to do and it's it's well worth it in the sense that you will get that peace of mind and then that's one less thing you can have to worry about one more thing you can rule out with regards to um having a negative impact on your health. And I've noticed, you know, firsthand a direct, like I said, a direct correlation between radon and um, some lung ir irritation that I was experiencing. And before this, I was scratching my head going, why, why is this happening to me? You know, we're, we try and take care of ourselves and we try and keep our air clean and, and, uh, and cleared out and venting the whole place out at least once a week. So it was puzzling to me until I finally got this, this machine and hooked it up and lo and behold, we have higher than um, higher than safe levels, as far as I'm concerned. So that's it. That's the the machine here. It comes with instructions. Um, the shipping was really fast. I think I got it in less than a week. Um, actually, probably closer to like four or five days. So I was really impressed with the shipping time. Um, I picked this one up on eBay, I believe, and it was again, it's about $180 Canadian well worth the money in my opinion super easy to use it does come with instructions showing you how the machine works and the difference between long exposure and, and short exposure and it actually does have a um it actually does have an alarm here as well so if ever it would go over 200 it would set off an alarm and let us know that you know it's beyond uh, safe levels well not safe but um less safe levels i guess you could say so that's it. That's pretty much my review for safety, the Safety Siren Pro Series 3 radon gas detector. Um, hope it uh, was informative for you. If you have any questions, feel free to drop those in the comments below. Thanks, everyone. Take care.